Welcome back to the garage. It's a nice day outside, especially after all this rain and stuff we've had. It's the first day of just beautiful sun and just a nice day outside. So, got a few projects planned for this weekend. I uh, think I'm gonna build the skid plate today. Let's get to it. So today I'm going to start mocking up my skid plate build. Now I've been collecting some supplies for a while. I went in today and picked up this uh, one by one square tube stock. It should, the 14 gauge should work for my purposes. So for my skid plate I actually went with an eight, eighth inch steel. For my purposes I don't really, weight isn't that big of a factor. Uh, when I'm sliding over rocks I don't want a rock to grab a hold of aluminum and hold me up. For a rally cross purpose or a rally kind of build, an aluminum thicker skid plate, like a quarter inch would be great. But for my slow, methodical kind of skidding that I'll be doing on rocks, I don't want it to dig into the aluminum and grab a hold. I want it to just hit the steel and keep on moving. I'll be using this. I'll probably use this as a template to cut out my steel and cut it a little bit oversized so I have some stuff to work with. I'm gonna go ahead and lift the Civic up, take the wheels off and get it start ready to get mocked up. So one thing you want to identify when you're building your skid plate is your mounting locations. Now what I'm going to do is I went ahead and took this bolt out here and I'm going to go find me a little bit longer one. This is just the one that holds that lower control arm, the front lower control arm to the subframe. And what I want to do is I want to bring a bracket straight off of here to be the back side of my skid plate. So I'm going to run to the hardware store see if I can't find a little longer high grade bolt that'll hold up to that because it's a pretty strong bolt. All the Honda suspension stuff is pretty, pretty high grade steel. So basically the back side of the plate will be there. And for the front side of the plate, I haven't decided yet, but I think I might want to mount it here off of this traction bar. I think that'll give me a nice segue here so the skid plate doesn't actually get caught on anything. So this will be the lowest point and it'll just kind of bounce and hit the skid plate and go across. This is my lower control bar arm bolt, and this is my radius arm bolt that came off my traction bar. So, in order to, for this to work, I want to be able to put this quarter inch steel plate and make a bracket that comes off the top and bottom of those. So I need these to be at least a quarter inch to a half inch longer, because currently that traction bar, all said and done, there's not many threads poking out of the top of that lock nut, so I don't want to run the risk of engaging less threads and making it weaker. So I'm gonna find a higher grade, if not a similar grade bolt to go in the traction bar. And the same for the lower control arm because I wanna be able to put a washer stack and then this quarter inch plate in there for a bracket for a drop down to mount to the top of my skid plate. So I swung by the hardware store, got some bolts. I think they're gonna work. Give them a shot, see if they work. I grabbed some washers to go along with it. Got some rebar to weld up. Just for a little bit of reinforcement, I got some ideas to use it as a kind of like a, a bracing to keep it from bending and flexing and whatnot. So this is only eighth inch steel. So this is the longer bolt that I got for my traction bar. This is the one I had in stock and this is the one that I got there at the hardware store. I think it's gonna be the right length. It's the same grade, so it's a good strong grade 10 bolt. So I think that with some washer stacks, that bracket's gonna work. I can run that bracket through there, still bolt this nut up to it, and still have plenty of threads of engagement because that's one thing you don't want on this a skid plate is, or any kind of suspension stuff, is you don't want to use just a few threads of engagement. If this thing has every bit of threads of engagement bolted up to it, you better get all your money's worth out of that, that nut there, giggity. But make sure that you're, you're not just putting a couple threads in there and calling that good, because that's not good. If you hit a rock or you hit a bump or whatever, those couple threads are not gonna hang on, at least not for very long. And plus, you're not gonna get any kind of locking feature here that you have in that nut. So, be warned, that's a tip from an engineer. Now washer stacks, you can stack all of them you want on there, cause that just, that's just good stuff. Now for this back bolt, 
Go ahead and double check, make sure this thread's up fine. It should, same thread pitch and everything. And it is, it's threading up. What I plan on doing is, there's a little bit of a lip here. You, I don't know if you can see it from that angle of the camera. So I bought a couple washer stacks. That I'll throw in here, and when I actually go to put that on, it'll place just enough lip there to drop my bracket down. And the bracket will then clear and stay flush for when I bolt that all the way down. Now that may not make sense right now, but when I actually get the holes drilled and all that stuff, it'll, it'll make more sense that way. So what I'm going to go ahead and do, I'm going to take my, my bracket stock that I'm going to make, and I'm going to go ahead and chop it up. So a quick bit of advice, if you don't have a traction bar on your wagon or EF or whatever you're putting the skid plate on, you'll still have tow hook mounts up here. They can drop down. You can actually weld a piece of steel in between the two tow hooks and make you a brace and you can you can probably go ahead and bolt it to your tow hooks up there just depending on your application or you could make brackets to come off your tow hooks. I'm using the, uh, the bolts to hold on this because I think that's going to be a more clean setup and a little more low profile setup so it doesn't get hung up on so many rocks. We'll see if this works and if it doesn't work I can always make a version 2. Primarily the goal of the skid plate is just to mitigate any damage to my skid plate or transmission or anything underneath there that's vital to me getting home. Being a car and being a wagon, going off-roading like I do, there's a lot of potential for a, you know, a large log or a rock to come up and just smack the oil pan, put a crease into it, and leak all the oil out. I don't want that to happen, so that's why I'm primarily building the skid plate. So what I'm going to do now is in order to get my measurements, I'm going to measure between these, this bolt and this bolt here, the two lower subframe bolts and see about how long my crossbar needs to be. And I'm gonna cut the crossbar and I'm gonna reference that as my height that I need to be because I don't want it to be up against the exhaust. I don't want it to be up against transmission or anything. I'll leave probably about an inch gap in between. So it's looking about like 27 inches. So I'll probably cut it to 28 and a half or something like that to give myself a little bit of lee room. It looks like if I do about a four and a half inch bracket there, That'll keep me clear. Looks like that might keep me clear. I think I'm gonna cut the brackets about five inches and then we'll see where we are at. Do like that. That way I can mark my hole on the other side. I hope you guys like dash cam by the way. I hope this works. Get it dash cam like you know Russia. Go ahead and center punch it there. Go ahead and put a little drill through it. Now I could get all fancy and measure it center to center and make sure it's on point, but I'm in the business of fudging things. Yeah, fudging things like making two center punch holes. We'll do the uh, top one. So let's see how close we got. All right. See, I can live with that. That's not a bad height. Not bad at all. So what I'm gonna do now is go ahead and get ready to weld this up. Basically, I'm not gonna go ahead and, I'm not gonna do a finish weld. I'm just gonna tack these on pretty decently so they'll keep their shape, keep their, their orientation. These top bolts will be where it actually bolts the lower control arm bolts. And that'll be the back mount of the actual skid plate itself. part welded up I'm gonna go ahead and loosely bolt it into the uh, lower control arms hang it in there put my uh, cardboard template back up there and then I'll decide to cut my plate from there I'm gonna oversize the plate a little bit so when I get ready to weld it on and kind of know what I need to do with it all right so one more time before I go ahead and cut the plate I'm gonna go ahead and make sure that my cardboard template fits up right make sure it's fairly close to what I want really happy with it. 
looks like it clears everything pretty well. Man. You know, I'm just going to go ahead and send that. It's definitely a low light, but you can tell. I went ahead and preliminary tacked it all up. And the plate is on. I'm going to uh, take it off, go ahead and clean it up, put my reinforcements all over it, and kind of get it good and strengthened. And then I'll probably go ahead and throw a coat of paint on it just for shits and giggles. Skid plate is uh, it's done for now. I'm happy with it. We've got these gussets welded up. Some, just some rebar I picked up, cut up. Don't look at the shitty welds. Really don't look at that one. The bottom look good. Yeah, smooth. I beveled the edges underneath. Just kind of hit it with a 45 with a grind wheel. Trying to make it nice and smooth on top. But yeah. So I got the skid plate out. It's day two. I'm gonna go ahead and throw a coat of paint on it. Just to keep it from rusting. I'll do, uh, while the paint's drying, I'm gonna go ahead and do an oil change on the wagon, just so while I have everything off, I can go ahead and change the oil, because I was gonna do it anyway, and before I put the skid plate on, I need to go ahead and change the oil, because I'd have to drop it anyway. I, uh, I gave myself a nice little sunburn across my forehead. When I was welding yesterday, my welding cap wasn't all the way down, so, yeah, oh well. I'm in the midst of battle with this thing, but I think I found a trick that might help you if you're doing this the way I am with the traction bar. Now, actually, I was having trouble bolting it up, getting it all lined up, so what I did is I actually dro dropped the traction bar down with the two 17s, and I'm able to get a wrench on here, hold here, while I hit it with the impact there and tighten those down. So I've got the two front tabs locked down to the plate. So that worked out pretty well. So now I'm gonna to try to fight with this, get these 17s put back up here, get the traction bar mounted back up, and then I'll work on the back, which those are still gonna be a pain in the neck because they have to, because they're oriented like this and they can kind of get off center and up and down. So there's a couple different orientations that can get messed up. So that'll be a lot of lining up, but I think I'll get it. I think this will be easier. Hopefully this tip will help you out if you're in the same situation I am trying to get this thing put together like this because Whenever you put a custom part on something, the hardest part is always trying to get it just to the right, find the right way to put it all together. And once you get a method put together, then there's nothing to it, I'm getting on and off. But it's just that very first time always takes a while when you're putting custom parts on a car. So have patience, and get to it, and find the best way for you. Well, it's all bolted up. All four corners are bolted up. You can see when I bolted this side up, that bracket kind of pulled that in and actually lifted it a little bit, and brought it up closer to the traction bar but you can see that it's good and flush up there with everything and that's what I was going for I really didn't want to have too much of a lip here to catch on stuff I wanted to when I hit a rock it hit and slid underneath you can see underneath nice smooth profile and that's what I was going for I may bevel the edges on the back and the front the back especially so when I'm backing up it doesn't actually when I'm backing down it doesn't get caught on something But if you look to here to the side, you can see where it's bolted up. I've got a three washer stack right back behind here. And uh, the booger welds, but what's up my dude? You can see I've got my reinforcements in there. And it's bolted to the bracket there on the end of the uh, traction bar mount, on both sides. But everything clears good. The uh, exhaust is close, but it's hard to get a good camera angle, but there's a appreciable gap all the way back. You can see the gap between everything there and the rear. It looks good. 
It's a good solid skid plate. I feel confident to smash it on stuff and let it rock. But yeah, that's all she wrote there, guys. But yeah, that's it for the skid plate. I think it turned out pretty sick. I'm excited to go use it, try it out, and bash it on some rocks. But anyway, guys, if you have any questions or uh, anything like that, there's really nothing to it but to do it. I could have done a little bit better welding, but uh, I know I'm learning. I'm not the master welder. Anyway, guys, like I said, if you have any questions, any comments, anything you want to say about it, uh, put it in the comments below. But uh, thank you guys for watching. Until next time, guys. Peace.